Diablo 3 can be whatever you want it to be. The end game can be highly competitive, where it lets you team up with friends or go solo to soar on the Greater Rift leaderboard. Or you can do what I do and use it as a form of relaxation as you blast through rifts, sending hundreds upon hundreds of demons to their deaths. I love the feeling of progression in Diablo 3. You start off with no gear and one basic move that means you'll have to pick off one demon at a time. You'll soon gain access to more skills though, and loot is plentiful, so you'll soon find yourself with more than enough gear to equip and materials to craft with. There are multiple ways to level up, and each can be done alone or with friends or random players. You can work through the campaign chapters in story mode, or if you're playing a seasonal character, you can jump straight into adventure mode and complete bounties or rifts. When you initially choose your class, which is something I usually agonise over, you are not limited to what you can do with it. I mean, obviously you are to some extent. Clearly a barbarian isn't going to start throwing magical balls of fire around, just like a demon hunter isn't going to fight in melee range with an axe. But given the choice of skills you have at your disposal, that's four skills per available slot. The glyphs each skill has, along with the passive abilities you can equip. There's a hell of a lot of room for customization, and that's before you even look at the armor set bonuses you get at max level. If you choose to play the campaign, you'll often be accompanied by one NPC or another, almost as if the game was gently suggesting you should try co-oping with other real people. Which is fun in itself and has the added bonus of higher experience and gold gain, super handy if you have a max level friend willing to boost your character. If you choose to go solo, you'll get your first companion fairly quickly into the story. The Templar, a burly chap with broad Yorkshire accent, who also happens to be my favourite, will be on hand to help you put the smack down on any demons you put in front of him, and will annoyingly shout, can we find more like these, after you've defeated an elite pack that has probably killed you multiple times in the process. Still, 10 out of 10 for enthusiasm. He'll also be quick to chastise you if you leave him standing around for too long while you quickly tab out to check Twitter. Hitting the level cap is really where the game begins to shine. Once you reach level 70, you start grinding for gear. This is the part of the game which can be the most satisfying and the most frustrating at the same time. It's great to see a damage increase as you get more gear and armor set pieces, but as you are largely at the mercy of the dreaded RNG, you don't always get what you want, or what you need. The initial excitement you feel whenever you hear the familiar chime of a legendary item dropping soon becomes clouded by the sea of gear that you end up swimming in, none of which have the stats or passive abilities that suit the build that you want to play. Still, Diablo 3, for me at least, is a great game to dip in and out of. Greater rifts take less than 15 minutes to complete, and you can ramp up the difficulty which also increases the amount of gear that's dropped. Or, if you're after something a little more sedate, you can just run through a normal Nephilim rift or two, in the hope of nabbing that one piece of gear that will complete your armour set. Seriously though, there's something oddly majestic about running through a map and destroying everything on your path, all while listening to the soothing classical music that the Diablo soundtrack offers. Or, if you've had a particularly crappy day, you can change up that mood and feel of the game by substituting the in-game music with a nice metal soundtrack. I am so good, I astound myself. What games have you enjoyed playing recently? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Four, four glyphs? No. That's four skills per available slot. The glyphs each skill has, along with a passive f f f f fuck.